to whom 6 lakh fresh engineering graduates hire. FY23, 2.5 lakh fresh engineering graduates hire. FY24, only 80,000 fresh engineering graduates hire. Only 80,000 fresh hires, that's a two decade low for Indian IT and it's very scary. These are the hiring numbers for India's largest software companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro, Cognizant, Tech Mahindra, etc. for the financial year ending March 2024. Even though there are still two months left for the year to end, there are no indications that any more hiring is going to take place. Infosys and Wipro, for instance, announced that they won't be participating in annual placements this year. In fact, an Economic Times article quotes data from Xpeno, a specialist IT hiring firm, that says that in the last 12 months, IT firms have net hired only 50,000 freshers. The same article says that when 15 lakh engineers will graduate this year in July, less than 1.2 lakh will find jobs. Another problem that has been highlighted in several reports says several thousand freshers who have got offers from big IT firms in FY23 have had their joining dates pushed back continuously. It is shocking that hiring has fallen so drastically in just two years after IT hired 6 lakh freshers in FY2022. The problem is more severe for engineering colleges in tier 2 towns. Until FY22, these colleges used to depend majorly on mass recruitment drives from IT's ITES companies. Media reports say around 30 to 50 percent of placements used to be done from large firms. This year, the number is negligible according to placement officers in Karnataka, Rajasthan, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Engineering colleges start placement drives by August every year. In FY22, TCS and Cognizant made offers to 770 students at the Government Engineering College in Thrissur, Kerala. In FY23, the number dropped to 570. As of October 23, the companies hadn't visited the college. The situation was the same according to the Purnima Group, a Jaipur institution that runs three engineering colleges and one university. Infosys, Capgemini and Cognizant hadn't visited their campuses and only TCS had given a positive indication. Is Indian IT in a slump? In FY22, digital transformation was a buzzword and there was a lot of demand for techies. Attrition levels in IT companies were over 30% as people kept jumping from one company to another. Fast forward to today and we find that companies aren't hiring. Today, companies are laying off people in large numbers. Between January and October 2023, tech startups laid off 28,000 people. Attrition has dropped to 16-18% to and will likely drop further. Companies are able to hire experienced people at lower salaries. They don't have to be trained unlike freshers and can hit the ground running. A PTA report in December 2023 said overall fresher hiring by IT companies has fallen from 26% of passouts in FY22 to 10% in FY24. A Business Today report from December 2023 quoted a Team Lease Digital study that said there is a widening skill gap among freshers where only 45% of applicants currently meet well-rounded proficiency expectations. The findings also reveal that companies are looking for a combination of soft skills like communication, problem solving, teamwork, emotional intelligence, etc and hard skills which involve technical proficiency in programming languages, software development methodologies, cloud computing and data analytics. An October 2023 report by the Ken said recruitment agencies like CIEL, HR and HirePro expect a massive decline in fresh graduate placements. It quoted a training and placement officer from IIIT Pune who said that by October they would have placed 70% of the batch but October 2023 saw only 50 offers from as many companies. This means each company picked up just one student. The batch strength is 200 students and matters have only gotten worse since then. While second-run colleges like IIITs are facing issues, it's the same for IITs too. The Ken report quoted Kripa Shankar Singh of IIT Patna who said they invited over 2,000 companies to hire their students because they are in a tough spot this year. And if they are lucky, maybe 200 companies will show up. Goodbye to the golden days.
Indian IT is a $250 billion sector that employs around 54 lakh people. It shot into the limelight in 2000 during the Y2K crisis. At that point in time, the world fell short of techies. India was and is an engineering factory. India had a lot of techies and growth in the Indian IT sector surged. In 2006, Carnegie Mellon University further developed the capability maturity model and that became an industry standard after it was deemed essential for US government contracts, especially those in software development. Indian IT companies were quick to certify themselves as CMM5 and this opened up doors and wallets to them. 2008 was another boom period for Indian IT. While the world suffered a recession, Indian IT saw loads of money coming in as it is a much cheaper option for companies in the US and Europe. They outsourced contracts to India as part of their cost-cutting measures. And as the amount of jobs in Indian IT kept going up, the number of engineering colleges also surged. It didn't matter to IT firms if students were software engineers or not. They were hired en masse and then trained. IT companies kept huge numbers of people on bench as well. Former HCL Technology CEO Vineet Nair in an interview to ET had said, that today Indian IT is not relevant for its customers. The Y2K problem and the 2008 global financial crisis were not created by Indian IT. He said, we did not create the problem, we did not create the market, but we had the answer to the problem. In today's market, we don't have that. We don't have products, we don't have platforms, we don't have IPs, intellectual properties. We don't have the consulting capabilities. So the question to ask is, your revenue is going up, market cap is going up, profitability is going up, but is your relevance going up?